Oh, there we go. Hello, viewers. And Hello. Welcome, and welcome hey. to another fucking Let's Play. Another <laughs> Heroes of the Island. Which I believe is that's the first time I've used the actual title I use for these. The actual title. Um, and today we are playing Heroes of the Storm, as opposed to every other day. Heroes of the Porn. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. It's just going to be a long, slow burn on this game for a while. Just a long, stuff. slow burn. Until the end of the game. Until we reach the end of the story. Yes. I feel like we're getting farther into story mode, though. I'm starting to understand things a lot better. Oh, we've almost beaten this game, I think. I'm waiting for where the, I'm just waiting to find out who's roll. behind it all. Yeah. It's, it's Lily. We both know it's Lily. <laughs> I've destroyed you all! Because it's an adventure! It's an adventure! I wanted to get out of the house. So, we do have a topic today. Mostly because I kind of wanted to figure out what's coming out this year. Because I had no idea. And in my line of work, that actually matters. So we're going to be talking about comic book movies coming out in 2016. The fantastic year. Of, a fantastic year a for year. fantastic so, films. Oh, well, so that seals it. 366 days. Um, I'm going to get so much done. We've got to get like some money for our extra 24 hours here. And Lord knows there's enough uh, movies coming out in the world of comics to justify it all. Um, I'm doing a little count right now. So let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight live action movies. Nice. That certainly beats la uh, last year's uh, three, four, depending on how you look at it. Um, depends on whether or not you count the Kingsman. But these are eight superhero movies. That's that's more than I uh, realized. No wonder I couldn't keep track until now. So uh, first up on the list is the very illustrious, um, much anticipated comedy film coming out for uh, 2016 on February 12th, which is, of course, Zoolander 2. Um, a movie I'm really looking forward to. <laughs> How is that a comic book movie? Uh, it's not, but it's coming out on the same day as Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and to be honest, I am a little more excited for Zoolander 2, but that's just because I really like that movie. Do you think Zoolander 2 will be... I told Rachel the other day, I have the feeling it's going to be like Anchorman 2, where it's not quite as good and it's kind of different and weird, but still funny. Yeah, and you know what? I saw the trailer for it, and do you remember the scene where Will Ferrell, like spills the latte in his little assistant's face. Yes. They do that exact same thing in the trailer. <laughs> ah, excellent. Which is not, yeah, not a... So like Wayne's design. World, just the same thing over yeah. and over. Which, you know, and... But one thing I do remember about Zoolander is its trailers were very... Like, it had the stupidest jokes in the movie in its trailers. And it actually was... A, like, yeah. had a lot better stuff in the actual movie, so... We'll have to see... All right, we but, should go play objective. Yeah, that's a good idea. But yeah, that's not. I just thought that was funny because it was coming out the same day as Deadpool. Right. Um, Deadpool is the other one, and uh, that's that's kind of cool. I'm. I think it'll be good. I yeah. liked the trailer when I first saw it, and I and I just watched the second trailer, and I I hadn't been doing that in prep of this video or something. I just got curious a couple nights right. ago and was just checking some of them out. It's pretty cool. Megasonic Teenage Warhead's in it. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, and she looks friggin' awesome. And she uh, she's dressed in like um, like a uh, new X-Men uniform. And, and she and Colossus is there too. Oh, really? So there's like the presence of the X-Men. That's awesome. In a much more real way than like X-Men. Who is making this film? You know, I have no... Oh, I probably have it on my little thing right here. 
Cheat sheets are the best. I'm not looking at the screen right now though, so hopefully that's <laughs> just got stunned. Okay. Um, Tim Miller. I have no idea who that is. Me neither. It says he's making a comeback here. Um, but the guys... <laughs> That's always what you want to hear. Yeah. Although the guys who wrote Zombieland are, uh, wrote this, which is very that encouraging. Well. Yeah. So I, I also am looking forward to it. Trailers are, well, like even in the example of Zoolander we just gave, trailers can be very misleading. Um, yeah. But these ones seem pretty on the up and up. And like... They're promising. They don't reveal too much. Like I don't feel like I've seen all the jokes in the movie. They're ready to grab these watch seats. the trailers. Um, so I'm hoping it's good. very stylistically actiony. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, tra the play, first uh, trailers. The Deadpool game. To get that footage. Yeah, it was all right. I didn't finish it, but yeah. I don't. I don't think I did either. But I thought they got the humor down pat, and that's yeah, kind of what so. I think they should go for with this. Sort right. of, although I get, I'm pretty sure they're going to tone down the whole, like, multiple narration <laughs> thing. And, It'd be but. cool if he, I could see it in a way, like, if he's narrating the story even, like, to adapt it to a film. Yeah. That would be good. That would But it, I think it would be really cool if he broke the for fourth wall and just actively talked to the screen. I, yeah, and I kind of think they're doing that, or, like, kind of doing that. Uh, the trailers certainly suggest they are. And that would work fine. And then they don't need to do the internal narration. As much as I'd like to see a movie do that, I don't think this is the one for it. <laughs> like that's this isn't the place to start that. <laughs> right. Um, that's a little too much, I think. Even like, see the thing about Deadpool's humor is it does sometimes border on the LOL, like so random kind of attitude that. That's true. We need, it needs to take a step back from, and that's not really what they're going for. Like the kind of over the top actiony kind of thing, which. Uh, that's that's where Deadpool shines. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll be cool. Yeah. So let's see what's next on the list. Um, so next up is Dawn of Justice coming out in March. Is that the Justice League film? Yes, uh, Superman v Batman. Oh right. Um, Dawn of that's Justice. That's a thing. Uh, I have not seen the second trailer of this one actually, but I have seen the first, and it was. <laughs> Not promising. It was um, very stereotypical looking. Yep. And look, like, Man of Steel wasn't upsetting to watch, but the more. It was. I just thought it was thought about ridiculous. It, yeah. And like. Heal me up, heal me up. There's a lot of. Use issues. your 10. Oh, yes. We are level 10 now. Drink up. And, and it just looks like it's going for that same tone of Man of Steel. Now, yeah. brief like comments I read in the peripheral suggest there were more jokes in trailer number two, and maybe it's not all doom and gloom. I'm okay with doom and gloom. It's just got to be a good movie. And I thought Man of Steel, once he found that costume, and it's like, oh, this is just waiting here. And yeah, if I didn't gonna, like if that movie much. If you're going to that tone, you need to, like, have a certain authority with it. Yeah, you can't make it a silly comic book movie. Or have it like written by a child. <laughs> <laughs> or I, will... uh, I don't know how to put it, but he's it's just it's very like, oh I'm gonna kill myself now so that, that you don't reveal your identity. Right. That's, that's the realm of sanity. <laughs> yes, that makes sense. But it wants to be taken seriously, and then you have like almost a joke of a fight scene that actually could have been really cool but then you're slamming into like 7-eleven and sears and it's very distracting because no that's important that's how you weirdest pay for the uh, it's, that's the that's the weirdest product placement i've ever seen like walking dead has product placement but it's just look like, sears gets broken too <laughs> like they just drive around the cars and that's very natural and fine um a lot of shows will do like computer product placement because they yeah. need to look something up Sony. on the internet and that's pretty yeah sony like sony kind of gets away with that because you know it's fine that, that never bugs me too much in uh like their spider-man movies for example i can solo this boss the root monster yeah just let me do it and you guys can do your thing All right. um so we'll see i am 
I hope it'll be good. I don't want it to be bad. I just... <laughs> DC has not earned a lot of faith. And we'll talk about the DC movie I am looking forward to. Which is? Well, that's down the, that's down on the list, but it's Suicide Squad. <laughs> yeah, you're looking forward to that, eh? Yeah. And we'll talk about that in a second. But let's move on to the one that happens next in the year, which will be Civil War. Friday. Is that an Iron Man movie or a Captain America movie? That is a Captain America movie. Marvel has yet to make four of any hero's movies, so this will be Captain America's third. Iron right. Man doesn't. But it's, it very much looks like an Iron Man movie. And I finally gave in and watched the trailer, and it does look freaking awesome. I didn't know there was a trailer out for that. That's interesting. Yeah. And, well, I'll tell you what's in it, if that's all right. Absolutely. It's nothing terribly spoilery. But it looks... It's a trailer. You're not going to spoil anything. Exactly. So, um, it suggests that, like... Basically, rather than it being a civil rights issue, which, okay, uh, it's kind of more about the custody of Bucky and how that leads to them kind of trying to say, like, no, Captain America, you can't just be this rogue, super-powered agent. <laughs> like, you need to work with the government and they serve in papers or something. Okay. And it kind of works because Tony, like, at the end of his first movie, he just out and out declared his identity. I don't think it's going to be too much about secret identities, but it's going right. to kind of be about, like... What role do these people have, especially after they disabled yeah. Shield? And okay. So that looks like a much more reasonable division than the original Secret or Civil War. So used to saying Secret Wars, God. <laughs> God, yeah, I can see why they would do it that way. It makes sense for a film. Yeah, and then it looks like there's some pretty awesome action. There's one awesome scene they show a glimpse of that I kind of wish they didn't, but it's of. Um, Bucky and Captain America teaming up against Iron Man and just like the choreography on it like they just show it for a little bit I'm lagging um, me too are you lagging right now? my entire screen just froze attempting to reconnect is your internet okay? Hello? Hello? Oh, there we are. Sorry. I lagged right out. Me too. Looks like we both just got disconnected randomly there. That's weird. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, but I didn't die, so that's good. Neither did I. But that definitely made me lose my train of thought. But yeah, so it looks pretty cool. Um, it's by the same guys who did Winter Soldier, so that's hopeful. Yeah, that's Tiro. I like that movie. And they're very talented. They did a lot of work on Community and stuff. That's cool. Um, which is a very good show. And they did some very good episodes there. So I remain pretty optimistic about that movie. Out of I movie, haven't really seen a Marvel movie so far that's been bad. Ant-Man I wasn't crazy about, but, you know. I was. I thought Ant-Man was great. but uh, like I, I just I'd thought it I'd... felt like it was outdated. Oh, uh, maybe. I get, kind of get what you're saying. Like I'd seen it a hundred times before. Yeah, that's Marvel's last Origins movie, and that, that aspect of it is true. But I had enough fun with it. And the experience I'd rate almost uh, better than Age of Ultron. Right. But uh, I get what you're saying. Uh, I'm, going. I, I'm kind of looking forward to him showing up in Civil oh, War. No. Yeah, that'll be cool. And, uh, yeah, that, that, I'd say that's kind of on my, uh, out of the three we've talked about, and maybe in the entire year, actually, no, this is second along what I'm most looking forward to out of all of these, but we'll get into that later as well, because uh, next up on the list is a very interesting one, X-Men Apocalypse, 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 yeah. And Apocalypse! Know, and the most surprising thing about it, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the case, is Wolverine is not in this movie. Really? Yeah, isn't that, like, insane? That's interesting. I'm happy about that, to be clear. I'm just amazed. <laughs> Never really been a fan of Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, to be honest. Well, and I feel like they have come to over-rely on that character. Like, Marvel and Fox and all of them. Like, Everyone, yep. He's too essential. So, it's it's kind of... I haven't seen the trailer for that, but it is out there. Um, what I've 
heard about the movie sounds pretty cool. And, it, you know, Apocalypse is pretty cool. <laughs> I remember I watched Five Minutes to Days of Future Past and fell asleep, so I'm pretty not optimistic about it. Oh, yeah? I, it, Days of Future Past is okay. I'm not crazy about it like a lot of people are for reasons I don't understand. But, uh... It's fine. It's a movie. <laughs> it's yeah. a movie. That's the problem with Fox is they've never really excelled at an X-Men movie. My favorite might still be First Class, and I'm just kind of like... Uh, that was my favorite one, I think, too. It's the least offensive. And then after that, it's X2, which isn't great. <laughs> yeah. Still, that's it's good. Sure. It's not a bad movie. It's, it's old now, but it's it's still pretty fun. Um, but... Uh, the only, the only other thing I like about it that I kind of want to see and I'm curious about is um, Sansa Stark in Game of Thrones. That yep. actress, uh, Sophie Turner, is Jean Grey. Interesting. Yeah, it's like, oh, she actually uh, sounds really cool for that role. And it takes place in the 80s, so it features like young Charles Xavier and Magneto, or the, the younger batch. Of oh, them, it's so. that first class generation, eh? Yeah. So, and it's kind of... It seems like they kind of want to resolve that, like make it into a trilogy. Interesting. Um, of sorts. So it's kind of neat to see where the X-Men are going from there. And if Fox does have grander plans than that, I'm not really sure what their game is. So. I'm not sure if they know what their game is. <laughs> I'm not even sure if they know there should be a game. So it's kind of like uh, Batman v Superman, I'd say. Cautious optimism, I guess. But a realistic look at it of like, well... We've been burned before by these studios. And <laughs> We've been burned before. <laughs> They've hurt us before. I'm just like they. It's almost like a con job where they don't. That's what they did to the con in seeing it. It's garbage. And they're they're good at like making something look decent at the outset. That's why they're a con. Yeah. Um, but Marvel's the only one who's kind of been like legitimately delivering. This is actually a big year for the other guys though. And like whether or not they can not poop the bed and deliver something. <laughs> I feel like the other guys are gonna poop the bed though. Well Sony already did. At least next time they might have some hope because they give it in to Disney. <laughs> and Disney's wonderful ways. Hooray! Victory number one! Yep. Because we are professionals. Professionals. I'm a pro at fashion. Yeah, Brian Singer is directing X Men Apocalypse, though. So whatever, it's probably just going to be a lot more of Days of Future Past, which wasn't bad, but they look and feel like the old X Men movies, which, after all that Marvel's done, really feels outdated. And that was the by far the biggest problem of. Days of Future Past. This is like, oh, hey, it's like Ellen Page and Halle Berry. Right. So, a big old whatever to that. Ellen Berry. Ellen, Ellen Berry. Which, nothing, no offense to them, it's just... I hope they feel offended. Like both movies and kind of, well, like, I like the, both as actresses and other stuff. Oh, sure, here it comes. Your fanboyness gushing out. Well, I mean, I can think of one good Halle Berry movie. <laughs> uh, I can think of a million. X-Men. Catwoman. X-Men 2. Catwoman. Um, oh, yeah, Catwoman, Swordfish. of course. Swordfish was probably the best. I mean, there was something about a computer. Oh, I, okay, so I'm looking at the next one on the list, and it's just ridiculous. Um... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. <laughs> I didn't even see the first one. Me neither. No comment, I guess, we can go with? It looked bad. I got, I got over Michael Bay a long time ago. <laughs> um, I kind of watched the Transformers movies still out of like abject, morbid curiosity. But fucking whatever to these Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles stuff. You know, I've never been that big a fan of that. I like Ninja Turtles, I just don't like those movies. I like the 90s movies. Yeah, um, I found well, out that one time Guns N' Roses wouldn't go on stage until Axl Rose finished watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Secret of Views. 
And uh, that's about it. I never really got into any other iteration of it too much. It's a kind of a fun idea, but whatever. Let's face it, you just hate turtles. Yeah. Yep. But like only the 200 year old wise Galapagos turtles. True. Like them. <laughs> Might as well just send them all to extinction. Send them away! Okay, well that's more than enough time for that. So next up is um, Suicide Squad. Suicide Squid. That one I'm actually looking forward to. Uh, like I said, this is the DC movie I'm a little more excited about. Because this trailer actually does promise some stuff. Kind of. How do you think that guy as the Joker will be? Well, he sounded awesome in the trailer. I'll give him that. Do you think Will Smith will be similar to Will Smith from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? I would love that. You know, I was watching this like retrospective uh, video on Independence Day, and I was thinking how great that movie would be if like the whole time he was just like, like <laughs> making Will Smith noises from French Prince And how much Bel-Air. better it would have been if he had to fly that plane with Uncle Phil instead? Oh, I was thinking of uh, Jazzy J or whatever his name was. That would have been good too, <laughs> DJ Jazzy Jeff. Yes, that's it. Um, but yeah, that one, that one seems like they've kind of embraced what they're going for, like as a story and all that stuff. And Suicide Squad. Yeah, I heard some people griping about how like Joker should kind of be like in his own headline movie as opposed to just like a side character, like he's kind of going to be in this. And I was like, well, they've done that before. Like I, I think it's kind of interesting that they're doing something like this. Also, yeah, the whole world building idea. Yep, I agree. So, and then it. You can see how it goes, and oh, and I'm sure he'll play a big role. Like, he's the Joker. That DC can't control themselves. Like, what are you talking about? He'll, they can't control themselves. He'll have stuff to do, I'm sure. And Batman Maybe Batman will good. show up, and you won't even know. Oh, I think he is. I'm pretty sure I saw him in one of the oh, trailers, God. like flash by. Although, uh, in the line of one of those little like blink and you miss it cameos, uh, I got my first good look of. Uh, What's his name? Black Panther in the Civil War trailer. Oh yeah? He looks fucking cool. <laughs> and it's just it's just him in his costume. You just see him for a second and it's like, oh man, that's gonna be so cool. <laughs> and so you looked at the Black him. Panther and you thought, oh man. There's nothing much to say about him. He's just uh a handsome guy? Yeah. I think he just uh he looks like he should. As all the Marvel characters do, but it's just like I'm getting excited about seeing some of these guys. And then, next up after that is Gambit. And we've reached October at this point in the year, to give you an idea of how far uh, along we're coming. Don't know how I feel about that one. Yeah, that I have zero hope for. Oh yeah, it's Channing Tatum, isn't it? Ah! (laughs) <laughs> I was trying to remember who was playing him, and I was like, oh, maybe they're going to get someone who's authentically Cajun. No. Well, never mind. Uh, who's directing it? I have no idea. Well, I'm asking you as I'm checking. It's rhetorical. I was going to say, you're the mastermind. They don't say. Someone named Joshua Zedimer has written the script from the Chris Claremont Testament. Don't All know right, what that means. kill this chick. Um, yeah. Ah, oh, I almost got Zero Tool. It's one of those movies that'd be great if it's good. Gambit's a fun character, but holy crap. That's going to be a miracle and a half if that works out. I'll say. Uh, Alright, well, and then the next one is the movie I am most looking forward to this year, and, and by far the most excited about, and that is Doctor Strange. That'll be cool. Yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, I, I don't really know the director's name, but I know he's like got a horror background. So he's that's cool. Movies like Insidious, and I was like, oh, you know what? That's really neat. I never would have thought to. Uh, around here. Okay. I never would have thought to do that, but boy, am I glad they did. Like that seems like a really good idea. And right. Kind we of should fits go up in that with shrine. Marvel's approach of like, like, I don't know if you've noticed, but each of their. Uh, solo movies kind of are their own little genre usually and stuff like thor is kind of more fantasy oriented and captain america is more political if you want to call it that 
Right. Um, but Arden Hilly. So taking a here a horror approach sounds friggin' great. And those are all the live action movies coming out this year. What are you most hyped for? What are you gonna wait in line for the theaters to see? I don't think I'll wait in the line at the theater to see anything. No, but what uh, are you staying up all night um, to go to the midnight showing of? I think Deadpool. I'm excited for, and I think Doctor Strange will be cool too. So you're gonna go camp out at the theaters for Deadpool and Doctor Strange? Well, I'm really more camping there for Ryan Reynolds. Uh, of course. Deadpool's kind of an extra secondary thing. He's dreamy. Did you see him in Green Lantern? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that ad campaign? No. Oh, they published a Deadpool poster, um, and I saw it on Reddit, so they put the Green Lantern poster next to it for reference, and it's an exact ripoff of the Green Lantern poster, except he has a ring pop. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I'm surprised they've been able to get away with making fun of that, and everyone's just kind of been on board with it, like Ryan Reynolds. I was thinking the same thing. Um, and he's kind of made subtle jabs at uh, the X-Men Origins Wolverine <laughs> movie, too. Oh yeah? How shitty that was. Nice thrall. Yeah. I would say mine are um, probably Doctor Strange over anything else. And then like vaguely Deadpool. But I'd rather see Zoolander in theaters. Like I know I brought that up jokingly. but That's I not have... a superhero. Yeah he is. Zoolander? No he's not. He's a male model. He has superpowers. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. He's really dumb. And he uh, stopped. Can that inject comedy show. into any situation. Yeah. Although you are right. Like I, I seriously doubt it's gonna be good. <laughs> or, I like, hope it's good. Comedy but sequels just... are so rare for that, though. Especially when they come out so late. Yeah. Like they're either Wayne's World two, where it's just the same thing. The same thing. Um, like Dumb and Dumberer, which is like immensely worse. I haven't even seen it, but just... Yeah. I, I hear it's bad, and every joke I've heard from it is just so flat. <laughs> <laughs> the first one's good. Oh, yeah. But that, like, new I haven't sequel, seen that in a very long time. Yeah. Well, I think that's why it's so, like, infuriating, is it's just like, ugh. It's, it's like... It not only doesn't live up to it, but it just is some of the most broad awful humor I've ever seen. Like, there's a Honey Boo Boo joke in it. And, and that's... And even back then, it was about two years too late. <laughs> Excellent. And they're, like, in it. And it's just awful. That's not even the worst. That's just what comes to mind. <laughs> and then there's... Yes. Uh, most others will just try and be as funny, but not quite... 22 Drum Street is a good example of it working very well. I thought it was still good. Yeah, I liked it. I thought, yeah, it, it, it almost might have been as like as good, if not better. Like, just really well done. They really nicely punched up the comedy there and sort of knew to make fun of themselves in the right way. <laughs> yep. Keep me healed. Um... Where the hell's our team gone? I don't know. Off on adventures or something. And that's the only uh, comedy sequel I can think of that really just worked as well as the first. <laughs> I'm sure there's others. Airplane 2 kind of does, but it's more like Wayne's World 2 where it just does the same thing. The same things, yeah. And those things work. An airplane's good enough that it's almost just worth watching. Kind of like Wayne's World 2. Like it, I don't hate Wayne's World 2. I just I don't hate it either. It's just you can't watch them back to back. Yeah, exactly. You can just substitute either movie and it's fine. Because <laughs> they're not like worse. That's one movie I absolutely loathe the idea of them ever bringing back. Wayne's World? Yeah. I, just, yeah, I agree. I haven't heard anything about it, but I would hate the idea of it. Plus, they're both way too old. Yeah, that too. But they did that with Weird. Dumb and Dumber. And Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, look Star how that Wars. turned out. Yeah, that was just an unmitigated disaster. No, that was fine, but... Um, 
that's an exception. <laughs> and then we have uh, Star Wars. Ah, yes. Then we have another list because DC is making three animated movies, all of which are actually worth talking about. Interesting. Because um, they've been doing this for a good long while now. Yep. I would say like several years at this point, they make these animated movies, and some are better than others. Uh, last year we got Batman versus Robin, which is I didn't. I really... wonder who would win that fight. Yeah. Um, didn't really care for it. It's mostly uh, about Court of Did the Batman Owls, actually. But, oh, I thought uh, you say it's about corporate interests. Corporate interests. No, it's about Court of the Owls, who I do like, but I didn't think. Uh... Batman, you're too corporate. <laughs> I'm Robin in my hipster independent phase now. Well, if they did Batman Inc., that would have been cool. But that is not what this is about. <laughs> um, God, they also did God, Mon God and Monsters, I should say. Gods and Monsters, I should say. And that's, Gods uh, and Monsters. and That was actually really good. Pets. Like, really fun. Um, but uh, this year they have an animated rendition of The Killing Joke. Which okay, is, that's cool. Yeah. I really liked what they did with Year One and um, The Dark Knight, so that is very promising. Because um, it sounds like the exact same thing, where they just basically make a movie out of the graphic novel. It's like, oh, okay, that I like The Killing Joke, and I doubt it'll be anything like super surprising, but I'd love to see a movie version of that, even if it's animated. And then there's something called Batman Bad Blood. I bet he gets some bad blood in him. And apparently Batwoman's in it. Well, that could be cool. Kate Kane's pretty cool. I don't know if you've ever read any of her comics. No, I haven't. She's interesting. She's like, uh, kind of cool what they did with Batwoman. And she's not like just an empty character. So that, I don't know. Like the one comics. who didn't talk. Yeah. Or the one who had a purse. <laughs> The hearse. I don't know about that. A bat purse. Oh, she a bat can... purse. I yeah. thought you said a hearse. A hearse. No. I was like, like she was like a funeral home director. The first Batwoman, whose name escapes me, but has been modernized and is a little better now. But she would just like have a purse and do woman things, I assume, and whatever horrible stuff came. Whatever out. women do. Well, I was gonna say whatever horrible stuff came out of the 1950s and and that culture. Um. You know, all of Here, that. go help them at the thing. I'm gonna grab this. That's good. But the uh... yeah, I don't know. Those the, the latest batch of Batman movies hasn't been very good, in my opinion. Um, very like just kind of lackluster, we'll say. Uh, ever since they kind of brought in Damian Wayne, a character who I like, mind you. Um, it just hasn't been that great. I don't know how to put it. They just have been underwhelming. It's Damian just not working out, Damien. Yeah. I actually think Damien's a great character and would make a great movie, but they're just very lackluster in their design. It's something like... To get get out here, Bella. Underwhelming is the word that comes to mind. And the last one on the list um, from this random website <laughs> that I'm following along. Who knows, I wouldn't be able to remember all this. Is uh, Justice League versus Teen Titans. It sounds very... One-sided. <laughs> that too. I was going to say boring. Um, but... Yeah. So, uh... Well, Batman versus Robin turned out to mostly just be a misunderstanding over the Court of the Owls, so... I assume it was, <laughs> it was just a over. misunderstanding. I'm glad we don't go flying into these serious fist lights because of these misunderstandings. Yeah. Well, I was just saying on my little uh, thing I was filming how great that little misunderstanding was for uh, the, what's it called, Ant-Man? Right. I actually thought that was one of the better parts of the movie, because it's just such a classic comic book moment where it's like, Hey! Stop that, you fiend! And they fought. <laughs> <laughs> you fiend! And it's just such a perfect like example of like yeah. a superhero fight where they're using their powers against each other, and it's kind of unique because it of that. It was good. Um, yeah, so, but I don't, I don't think they'll even do that. And it's probably just going to be like Vandal Savage is running amok or Trigun or something. And then they're kind of fighting, but they're really just working together, which is exactly, <laughs> they're really just working together. Well, like 
for the bulk of the movie, and then they're gonna kind of come into conflict. You know what I it mean? Was, like so they can fodder trailer stuff, but right, uh, it's really just um, more of the same, which is fine, but it's kind of misleading in its advertising, and it's probably just gonna be very underwhelming. But the Killing it's Joke DC. sounds cool. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Why couldn't they do stuff like that? Now we got a way out. And that's it for that list. And then I'm pretty sure Daredevil Season 2 and Luke Cage comes out this year as well. Oh yeah? As well as all the CW stuff. I think. CW Luke Cage stuff. hasn't really been confirmed, but they had like a November 2016 little teaser they did. Huh? What were we asking what? for? Uh, oh, like all the CW shows, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, and all oh. that. Legends of Tomorrow is pretty cool. I've seen the first two episodes of that. It's uh, it's kind of neat. I think Rip Hunter, I think his name is. It's like going through time and fighting crime with like Captain Cold and a bunch of other cool characters like that. Nice obscure but cool DC characters. And uh, it's been pretty cool so far. Shit. Keep me healed, boy. It's like, uh. It's like Doctor Who, but with superheroes and supervillains. I think that's a nice little summary of it. Cool. <laughs> they brought in a couple of characters from Flash and, uh, Green Arrow, so it's like. It feels like a real team. Or just, like, various mismatched heroes that they put together in a comic to tell something like this. But I've always found Rip Hunter pretty cool. I don't know if you ever read anything with him. No. Not a big DC guy. Uh, fair enough. He's one of the more interesting ones. Kind of like, um, I don't know a good equivalent. I mean, he's kind of his own thing. Cowboy um, time traveler is what I want to call him. <laughs> Cowboy time traveler. But yeah, I really like the first two episodes. Firestorm's in it, the Atom's in it, like it's kind of a neat That is cool. Now all they need to do is bring Booster Gold into the mix and it will be perfect. <laughs> Get some of that blue beetle going. You got a real, uh, I don't know what you have, but <laughs> you got something going on. We have slaughtered these guys, speaking of having it going on. All I have to do is just not really be paying attention and just sort of passively be healing while I'm talking about other stuff, and it works perfectly. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. <laughs> Never done that before, but... And that's all I really wanted to talk about. Um, I think it actually should be an interesting year. It's going to be a bit of a stress test for the general public. I could see that. I have a feeling like I'm how much is too much. Something's gonna bomb, but it might not. Oh, I'm sure Gambit will bomb. Gambit is kind of what I'm thinking too. Out of everyone on the list, boy, does that one feel like just so possible. <laughs> so boring and weird and. Well, Channing Tatum. Tatum's just a terrible choice. But, but Arden, the girls love him, just like Gambit. Well, see, like, if they picked someone, probably someone unknown, because, like, there's no actor running around who's, like, perfect for the gambit. <laughs> but if they pick someone who actually fit the role, um, he probably could be really interesting and actually, like, have appeal to human beings. Um, True. To human beings. And no offense to Channing Tatum. We talked about 21 Jump Street and 22. He's hilarious in that. Have you seen This is the End? Part of it. Oh, okay, he has a great cameo in that, <laughs> along with a bunch of other celebrities. But his is just—it's <laughs> uh, near the end of the movie, so you probably didn't see it. But it, it's great. <laughs> just truly spectacular. Truly spectacular. I—I I have no other means to put it. Um, but it just feels so horribly miscast. <laughs> Yeah, I would I would think so. Yeah. So I could see that one bombing. 
I mean, I guess, I guess it's not like one has to bomb, but I'm the way I kind of think about it these days. It's it's like they're they're kind of just becoming their own genre, like kind of like action movies or westerns or something like that. Right. So it's probably okay to have like one come out a month, and it will still have an audience, which is almost what we have here, just with like a few months skipped here and there. Um. I'm wrapping this up, and then we'll ready up for whatever. Sounds good. But, uh, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep playing Heroes of the Storm. Well, I wasn't done my train of thought there. But don't no forget to like, there. subscribe, and keep talking about your train of thought. Yeah. Well, I was just saying, like, I don't know. I feel like... We know which ones are definitely going to be successful, which is like Deadpool, Batman v Superman, uh, pretty much Suicide Squad, and then like obviously Marvel will be fine because <laughs> they've proven <laughs> that they just can pretty much weather any crazy idea they throw at us, um, us being just the world in general. And uh, Gambit is a little more of, I don't know, X-Men will probably be just fine. And I think that's it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the end. Welcome to the end. And uh, yeah, I guess that's all I really have to say. So, as we've concluded, um, the best one by far has to be, uh, what's it called? Zoolander 2. Make sure you all see that. So that we can um, kind of further the cause of Zoolander. Zoolander and doing comedies that are like 12 years old. Or and that's an important cause. Yeah. I still love that first movie. <laughs> it's just so weird. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good movie. A school for ants. And on that, we will sign off. A school for ants. A school for ants. All right. I almost hit end call.